Good morning, students. I welcome you all back. Let's get back to our chapter. That is, why do we fall ill? Today we are going continuing the topic. So for today's topic for the discussion or to study is the principle of prevention. In the previous video, we studied about the principles of treatment. In this one, we are going to study about prevention. Prevention. In this, we are going to study about the ways to prevent the diseases. But before we study about the ways to prevent diseases, first of all, we need to know, is there any limitations of treating infectious agents via medicines? Yes, there are limitations. For example, number one is our body functions might not be able to recover easily. Okay, once you get ill, so your body will not recover easily and this treatment takes time. Hence, it can affect our daily activities means during the treatment time, it will affect our health as well as our daily activities that we do. And an infectious disease may be transferred from a person who is suffering from the disease to the another. That means when a person is infected and diseased and while the treatment is going on, sometimes that disease could be a contagious one. So what will happen? Uh, the person who is infected that can spread it to the another person as well. So that is why we need to find out the ways to prevent the diseases in the first place. So first one is how do we prevent exposure to these infectious agents okay so before uh, like uh, we go deep into it we need to know what are the kinds of diseases so first one is waterborne disease so waterborne disease means how can we like prevent it by having the safe and pure drinking water and second one is airborne disease they can be prevented by avoiding overcrowded places that means if the place it is very overcrowded a crowded area is there so that means what you have to do you have to prevent yourself as well as you have to keep your surroundings or environment clean third one is vector borne diseases vector borne diseases means the disease which is carried by a third uh, organism that is called as the vector borne diseases and it can be prevented by keeping our surroundings clean and maintaining the public hygiene so this was the first one preventing from the exposure of the infectious agent second one is strengthening the immune system this is also very important one preventing uh, strengthening the immune system that means what is the function of the immune system what it does if any infectious agents enter our body the immune system can fight back and this can be made by poss possible by eating or yeah, having healthy food. So can you see this diagram? Okay. So this is uh, cholera. Okay. And cholera is uh, like uh, caused by the infected water. So if we have consumed the infected water, that means we would be suffering from the cholera disease and uh, Vibrio cholera is the causative organism that causes the cholera and these are the symptoms dehydration, skin elasticity, muscle cramps, low blood pressure, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, thirst, rapid heart rate and shock. So we need to be very careful. Second example is hepatitis A. In what happens in hepatitis A, there is the liver infection caused by the hepatitis A virus. Okay. And uh, what are the symptoms? Pain in the right side of the abdomen, fever, jaundice, digestion disorders, dark color urine, you'll feel weak, will have vomiting and as well as nausea. So these are the symptoms of diarrhea. Diarrhea is the main uh, like disease that is caused due to the un, uh, infected water. So these are the symptoms when you have diarrhea. Okay. So blotting, fever, stomach pain, abdominal cramping, change in the color of the stool, mucus, pus and blood, fat in your stool. So all these are the other symptoms. And the next one is typhoid. Even typhoid also is caused by the water. It is also a waterborne disease. It has high fever and it is caused by the bacteria Salmonella typhi. So this is the example of airborne disease. In this what can happen? Fever, stuffy nose, cough and asthma also can be caused. Can you see this? In this, if a person is infected, it can infect the other person. Tuberculosis also is airborne uh, disease. Okay. If an infected person uh, like uh, releases the droplets and that is taken up by the healthy person, what happens? That person can be infected by the uh, infected person. This is called as the vector borne disease. This is one example. For example, mosquito. It is the carrier of all these diseases. For example, malaria, 
yellow fever, West Nile, dengue, elephantiasis and Zika. All these are the diseases that is caused due to the uh, like it carries the carrier for example malaria it is caused by a protozoa okay it releases the protozoa into the human body into the bloodstream that is why the malaria is caused so what is the role of antibiotics and uh, we can say like antibiotics aren't effective against viruses so we will study about it they commonly work by blocking the biochemical pathways uh, that are important for the bacteria okay that means it uh, acts on the bacteria thus these inhibit the growth of bacteria hamper the met metabolism and kill them so antibiotics are generally effective on bacteria they do not work on viruses because viruses do not use the biochemical path and use host cell machinery for the making proteins that means they do not take up the biochemical path instead they use the host cell that means when, uh, you as you all know the virus lives inside the host and it multiplies inside so it takes the cell machinery for pre making proteins in the host cell itself okay so the most effective way to treat the viral infections and diseases is the vaccination okay so vaccination is very important okay and it can prevent a person from getting the disease at the first place so let's uh, see about the principle of preventions okay so uh, there are some limitations in the principle principle of preventions number one is our body functions might not be able to recover easily okay it takes time and uh, like it is not easy to recover fast and this treatment takes a lot of time hence it can affect our daily activities the same thing uh, as I have, I have told you and an infectious disease may transfer from one person to the other person meanwhile the treatment when the treatment is going on the infected person uh, is taken care by some other people and that can be transferred to the other person as well So therefore, we should find ways to prevent these diseases at the first place. We have to, before uh, getting the disease, we have to prevent it at the first place itself. So what is the first one? Like the same thing again, I'm repeating it. Okay. So for waterborne disease, safe and pure drinking, airborne disease, avoid overcrowded area and we have to strengthen our immune system. What is an immune system? Okay, immune system is a network of cells, tissues and organs that work together in order to protect our body from the diseases. That means the immune system is responsible for protecting our body from the diseases. And it is also responsible to destroy the disease causing germs into our body and help the special cells called white blood cells. These cells are present in the blood and hence circulate throughout the body and monitor it. So what is the function of the immune system? It destroys the disease causing germs. And it helps the specialized cells called white blood cells to circulate throughout the body and monitor it. Okay. So the germ that is entering into our body, they are called as the antigen. And once the antigen enter into, for example, if this is an foreign thing that is entering into our body, wait a minute. Okay. If it is entering into our body, this is called as the antigen. Can you see this term? Antigen. Any foreign substance that is entering our body is called as the antigen. And what is the function of immune system? It recognizes these antigens and releases antibodies. So for antigen, okay, for antigen, antibodies are released, okay, antibodies are released to fight back the antigens and destroy them with the help of the other cells. And this is the ability of the body which resists the disease and with the help of the antibodies and this is called as the immunity so what do you have understood till now means the function of immunity is to fight against the foreign substances that is called as the antigen and when the antigen enters our body antibodies are released by the special cells and these antibodies will kill them and destroy with the help of the cells and this is called as the immunity when all these functions occurs in our body is called as immunity what is the specialized method to strengthen the immune system? It is uh, very simple. So the uh, best one is the general ways to prevent any diseases and a specific method to immune system uh, is by the vaccination process. Okay, vaccination process. So whenever our body is infected by a disease, our immune system not only fights against it, but it also remembers how to respond when the same disease causing microbes affect our body. That means, for example, if a person is 
okay for example if a person is infected by any kind of disease okay for example this is the disease caused in this body so our body what it does from the immune system the antibodies are generated for example this is the antibody okay this is the antibody and what is the function of antibody it will fight against this antigen and it will destroy it okay here only uh, it does not the work of the antibody does not end here what happens whenever the antibodies are uh, like uh, like kept in our body and it the immune system remembers which antibody was used against this antigen okay so whenever again in the life again if some other uh, like antigen enters our body related to this then again the immune system will charge this antibody to fight against this one so this is called as the immune system so that means what does it say over here whenever our body is affected by the disease our immune system not only fights against it it also remembers how to respond when same disease causing microbe organisms affect in the next time that means again if the same infection comes then the same antibody would be generated and it would fight against it then similarly vaccines contains that an agent that is similar to disease causing agents weak or killed microbes that means what is the function what the function we do during the vaccination actually what happens is uh, in vaccination a uh, person is uh, the person is like uh, the sum of the agents okay similar to the disease causing agents for example disease causing causing agent but that would be weak or a killed microbe so when a weak or a killed microbe enter into our body our immune system learns that learns to fight against it and hence prevent us from actually getting infected when actual disease and uh, disease causing microbes enter our body uh, for example uh, this is the body of a human being okay so what they did do they will uh, insert or they will transfer a weak or a killed microbe into our body so when the immune system recognizes it what will happen this will fight against it and again it will be memorized by the immune system and when the actual disease is caused inside it okay inside the uh, body so this will this vaccination will again va vaccination means this like wh when we introduce the weak or killed microbes to uh, generate the immune system or activate the immune system to fight against it that is called as the vaccination okay so same here also when the actual disease causes uh, uh, disease causing microbes enter into our body then this vaccination would fight against it so today vaccines are available for enhancing our immune system against the various diseases such as polio chicken pox and measles so we have the vaccines for the polio chicken pox and as well as for the measles so these are uh, some of the cells that is present in, inside our body for the immune system they are called as the cells of the immune system so here it is monocytes eosinophils basophils neutrophils they are called as the innate immune system and apart from that there is one lymphocyte which contains the nk cell t cells b cells helper t cells and cytotoxic uh, you do not need to learn it in this uh, class but you should just remember there are some specialized cells that is present inside our body that are considered to be the cells of the immune system so you can see here that what is the function of the b cells it attacks the invaders which is coming from outsiders okay which is coming outside the cell i attack in, uh, invaders outside the cells outside the cells and it what it does i attack the infected cells if the cells are infected it will attack the infected cells so can you see here these are the antibodies they will bind to the antigen and they will destroy it and these antibodies are found in the blood stream so what is the uh, immune system booster tips so what do you have to do you should have good enough sleep from 7 to 9 hours per night then you have to manage your stress by taking time to practice self care like reading a book then you have to have a healthy diet including lots of nutrient rich fruits and vegetables and you have to stay active for the optimal immune um, functioning and uh, stick with the moderate actively levels 
So these are some of the examples of the diseases, malaria, diarrhea, cholera, typhoid, tuberculosis, and they are caused by these ones, okay? Typhoid like salmonella, typhoid, tuberculosis, mycobacterium, tuberculosis. Mode of transmission from where does it occur? Malaria from the bite of female anophilus. Diarrhea, contaminated food and water. Cholera, contaminated food and water. Typhoid also same. Tuberculosis from the cough and sneeze droplets. Contaminated milk. And what is the, uh, these are the controls. By taking all these things, you can cure it. And prevention is, you should break contact between the female anophilus mosquito and men. Then proper sanitation, all these you should remember. Okay. So here are other uh, diseases, hepatitis, rabies, AIDS, influenza. It is caused by the hepatitis virus AG, rabies virus, uh, human immun immunodeficiency virus. You need to HIV. You have heard about HIV, right? HIV. So the full form of HIV is human immunodeficiency virus. Then this one. Then how does it uh, uh, spread? Contaminated food and water and bite of infected animal, infected blood, semen, breast, milk mother to fetus all these are there and these are the cures that can be taken up read it very carefully and here also what precautions can you take to uh, like uh, not to get infected by these kinds of diseases so that's it all for today we studied about the principles of the prevention so as we all know prevention is better than cure once you prevent yourself from certain diseases you would be able to uh, stay fit and healthy and you would not uh, need the treatment. So that's it all for today. We'll be meeting up in our next video. Till then, bye-bye everyone.